It seems there is much debate today in the Christian community over whether we should support the nation of Israel and its right to exist. Those who say no make a myriad of claims and often align themselves with certain scripture passages. They argue that the people who are currently in the land are not real Jews. Others argue that since the land was formed largely by United Nations efforts, it cannot be legitimate. And still others argue that since Israel is so thoroughly secular in its overall culture, that surely these cannot be the people of God and this cannot be the true Israel. But let me help straighten some of this out. For those who wish to know the biblical contextual truth, I know that my treatise here will make some people mad. Some may even unsub us. But here's the bottom line on that. P.P. Simmons has never been on YouTube to see how many subs we can get. We don't make any money off the channel. We have no videos monetized. It matters not to us if we have 21 subs or 21,000 subs. We simply put out information that we think will help people to know the truth about the Bible and about huge geopolitical events that are going on in the world. Some of them, we believe, are tied right back to prophecy and the Bible. Now, having said that, let me continue with our stand on the nation of Israel. First, to disown, disavow, or discredit the nation of Israel, no matter what your argument, immediately puts you in the direct company of people and organizations like the KKK, Al-Qaeda, the Muslim Brotherhood, Hamas, Hezbollah, and every other anti-Semitic terrorist organization in the world. You would be in concert with every Islamic nation and every nation that has ever committed horrible atrocities against the Jews in Israel. That attitude aligns you with Mahmoud Ahmadinejad of Iran and Mohammed Morsi, the new Muslim Brotherhood president of Egypt, as well as Adolf Hitler and Osama bin Laden. It is amazing to me that most of the arguments I hear from so-called Christians against Israel's right to exist are the very same words used by hate groups all over the world, predominantly Muslim terrorist groups. But most importantly, to stand against Israel is to stand against God himself. I recognize fully that Israel's culture is as rotten as our own has become, as is much of the world's culture. This is a definitive sign of the last days and the soon return of our Lord Jesus Christ. I also acknowledge that much of Israel's politics is corrupt and falls in line with the corrupt politics of other world communities. But none of this is the point. There are myriads of biblical prophecies, given hundreds and some of them thousands of years before they occurred, that speak of Israel becoming a nation again in the last days just before the return of the Lord. One prophecy says that Israel's return would literally happen in one day. From Isaiah 66, verse 8, Who has ever heard of such a thing? Who has ever seen such things? Can a country be born in a day, or a nation be brought forth in a moment? Yet no sooner is Zion in labor than she gives birth to her children. And it did happen in one day. May the 14th, 1948, in one day, Israel was born and a 2,500-year-old end-time prophecy was fulfilled. Ezekiel 37 speaks of the return of Israel in the last days and speaks of her great power among the surrounding nations. Then Ezekiel 38 and 39 speaks of those nations forming never-seen-before coalitions for the purpose of destroying the new Israel that is back in the land. Most notable among those nations are Iran, Russia, Turkey, Syria, Egypt, and Libya. And we are watching those coalitions form right now before our eyes. Some of those coalitions have never been formed in history. And yet, every day before our eyes, they are being formed. And their stated purpose is to destroy Israel. Exactly what the Bible said. The Bible is coming alive right before our eyes and Israel is a part of it. Do not spurn what God is doing. Do not disown his sign to the world that he is on his way, the nation of Israel. Now for those who say, how could God use the UN or other evil nations to birth his nation Israel? Have you not forgotten that he used evil Egypt and evil Pharaoh and the nations that they were aligned with, all of them evil, to quote, birth his nation the first time? 
God uses whom he wishes to accomplish his purposes. Do not make the same mistake the Pharisees made when they rejected Jesus as Messiah because he was brought forth by a simple carpenter from Nazareth rather than from an elite kingly Jewish family like the elite Pharisees were looking for. You see, God chooses the weak things of the world to confound the wise. And do not forget, this attitude of rejecting what God has clearly done is what enabled the Pharisees to deliver Jesus to the cross. They rejected him as Messiah because he did not fit their interpretation of Scripture and who the Messiah would actually be. But they were dead wrong. And for those who say that it was the evil Jews who delivered Jesus to the cross, wrong again. It was the Jews, and it was the Gentiles in the crowd screaming for his death, and it was the Roman authorities, and according to the Bible, it was your sin and my sin that delivered Jesus to the cross. No man took his life. He purposely laid it down for us, willingly, all of us, Jew and Gentile alike, anyone who would believe. So you can malign Israel if you choose. We at P.P. Simmons will support Israel, the Word of God, and God Himself. We will support Israel's right to exist in the land. We will pray for her. The existence of Israel is God's sign to the world that He exists. He says that way back in Deuteronomy. And it is God's sign to the world that Jesus is on His way soon. It is also God's sign to the world that God's judgment is soon to fall. And that is the Bible truth. And that is why we support Israel and her right to exist in the land. Do you ever wish that you could more powerfully, succinctly, and accurately speak to the message of your Christian faith and the Word of God? This is the book you need, The Magic Man in the Sky, Effectively Defending the Christian Faith. This book has been featured on TBN, Atlanta Live, dozens of radio programs, and hundreds of markets. It was rave-reviewed by the Washington Times, and it was called a must-read book. Considering the times in which we now live, you need this book. Get it today on Amazon.com or the WND Superstore.